In today's video, we're going to be playing Minecraft. Crazy, right? Well, in fact, it is kind of crazy, as we're going to be playing for 100 Minecraft days and see how we progress. This video took a long time to make, as you can imagine, so I'd appreciate it if you could leave a like and subscribe if you're new. Let's get into it. So our adventure begins day one on this jungle island here where I gathered some materials, made some tools, killed a chicken of course, and then made some more stone tools until I went on a little adventure into the ocean where I found this ship here. We have a treasure map, which I found the treasure of course and got loads of shiny stuff. I also got a day one diamond from this shipwreck here, then headed out into the ocean to be away from the mobs. But luckily I spotted a village from the ocean, so I made my myself at home knocking this villager out and then of course day two I raided their village of all their wheat and supplies but I did give this guy some emeralds for an iron sword though got some awesome stuff from the blacksmith stole all their bookshelves and then left to never return and I went off on another adventure where I found another village and I raided all their stuff stealing this yellow bed for my boring white one and then I slept in that shiny new yellow bed and day three we got killing some salmon why well that's because I wanted a cat really badly so I tamed this ginger cat here and quickly named him Barry. He just looks like a Barry, doesn't he? However, look at Barry. Doesn't he look a bit lonely? So I got Barry a friend, which is this white cat here, which I named Sandra. And then me, Barry and Sandra set off on another adventure to another village, nearly fell down this hole. Then once again, swiftly stole all their stuff. Very nice. However, you can see my inventory is getting quite full. So after this sleep here, I decided to set out on day four for a place to live. But look at Barry. Doesn't he look cute sleeping on my bed there? So me, Barry, Barry, Sandra, we set out and I found this really cool area with all these different biomes surrounding it and I thought this looked like a perfect place to settle down. Of course, keeping Barry and Sandra quite far away from the lava pit. So I made them sit, put down all my stuff, made a couple of chests, stored all the goodies I collected in there and then I brought back some pigs and sheep because I wanted to get some food. Here you can see the struggle of getting them across the lake. And before I knew it, the day was over and moved on to day five where I planted some crops, made a tree, also made some babies as well as an iron pickaxe as that's right we're gonna head off into the mines and I hated it there look I nearly died straight away but I came back with 41 iron which I soon smelted. I then decided to get working on a little base for me to sleep in where I went around dying and trimming sheep, headed home and started working on our little tent here which I thought was very adorable and very suitable for a nice little starter base and Sandra and Barry are gonna love it in there whether they want to be in there or not. I then chopped some wood from my newly grown tree, made some pickaxes and went off mining again, this time on the quest for diamonds. However, I managed to let the skeleton kill this creeper here and got a lovely music disc, which is lovely. I also kept sleeping in the cave because I didn't want mobs to spawn up above and managed to find some diamonds, as you can see here. Only four, which is a shame, but I found some more later along with a load of other resources. I was just basically trying to get my XP up. Also, look at this singular diamond here. I hated this, but what I didn't hate was this spawner here, which I lit up, raided the chest, got a riptide book, which is going to be pretty useless. Plus some saddles though, which might not be useless. But the main useful thing is going to be the spawner. So I noted down the coordinates and then had another little sleep. And here you can see all the goodies I got. I got quite a lot of iron, quite a lot of redstone, quite a lot of gold. And yes, of course I had to use one of the diamonds to make a jukebox so I could jam out to my new disc. Perfect. I then made a diamond pickaxe, which as you can see here, I was very happy with, but I wanted this to be a good diamond pickaxe. So I got working on an enchanting area, which I built into a little cave here, added a load of bookshelves. And as you can see, fortune free, although I don't have enough enchantment points. But before we get onto that, we had to sleep again and then work on this cave. I wanted this enchanting area to look nice as we're probably gonna just leave it this way for the rest of the hundred days. So I wasted some of my string making some awesome looking bamboo and decorated the interior as well, which took quite a while because we're already somehow on day 12. And at the start of the day, I finished off my enchanting area made it look very nice and overgrown. And then I got working on my enchantment points. I made some pickaxes, went mining for coal, got a load, but came back and slept again. Healed some cows, of course, and most importantly, chickens. Yeah, die. I then went and got more coal, but discovered some wolves along the way. So ran back to my base quickly to get some bones and quickly tamed them. I got two in total because I couldn't just get one, although they had just killed my blue sheep. And I decided to name them Jeremy and Francesca. Francesca has the yellow collar and look, at our little family we're growing here. But forget family for a second because guess what we discovered? <gasps> a woodland mansion. However, I'm not gonna go in it right now because my armor is terrible. Instead, 
Level 30 enchantment, baby. So we went and enchanted our pickaxe. Very nice. And for some reason, I was like, never time. So I thought I'd build like a speedrunner's nether portal. However, this happened instantly. And I was like, oh, I'm not very good at this. And then this happened a little bit later. So I just eventually gave up and just mined the obsidian. And once we had our full portal, I headed into the nether. Ooh, scary. But actually, a very good nether spawn. We got two of the different biomes nearby. I mined some quartz for XP. And I also spotted a nether fortress. Plus, kill the guest all in the first day in the nether which i soon went home from despite getting shot by this dude here who was kind of annoying to be honest with you and after our brief little trip to the nether we are on day 15 and i decided i need a better mine because i've got some diamonds and resources but i keep getting lost in these tunnels and repeating back on myself so i wanted to start a strip mine so i built the cute little entrance you saw there and i got to decorating the interior of it it's kind of like another little cave next to our enchanting area there and it's Took quite a few resources in a while to make all of this so as you can see we're already on day 17 but here you can see the final few touches we've got a nice little storage room there plus a little like furnace and sort of like crafting area as well it's all looking quite nice and then we got working on making the staircase down to where we're going to have this strip mine which honestly took a lot longer than i thought i made it too wide because you know i i just wanted it to look a bit nicer than normal. Found some caves on the way. Also some diamonds, which was quite lovely. Used my new fortune pickaxe to mine those. And finally we got down to the level I wanted it to be at. And by the time all of that was done, we actually approached day 20, a fifth of the way through. I know, crazy. So we made some pickaxes and we got mining. As you can see here, we did a lot of mining. We got through day 21 all the way through to day 23. And we got some good resources from this, as well as some enchantments points and with those resources we managed to take them home and then store them and also craft some diamond armor which made me look quite fancy oh yeah I then started enchanting some of my armor, starting with the chest plate, of course, and the legs as well. But I ran out of enchantment points, so I decided to head to the nether and start working on the end game by doing some trading in an attempt to get some ender pearls. And my luck was terrible. I'm pretty sure I got five ender pearls from about 60 gold or something like that. Not very good whatsoever. After returning to sleep one day, I woke up to this. Quite scary, but you know what? Decided to avoid them and finally decided to head in into the nether fortress where I collected some nether war as you do obviously not leaving any behind got some rubbish from some chests and then started working on our blaze rods nearly died in the process but like to add not died yet so this could be a hardcore world I ended up with 11 blaze rods collected some quartz for some enchantment points also and came home to find these guys still waiting for me but slept in my tent satisfied with what I had achieved I then thought you know what it's about time we got working on a base so so I started making some space over here, adding a bit of terraforming in in the background, and then we set out gathering some materials. And you can see we're way past the quarter point of these hundred days now. And collecting these materials for this house took quite a while. Also, at one point, these guys snuck up on me without me noticing and started attacking me. So I had to kill them, unfortunately, giving me the bad omen. But luckily, I went out into the wild and got some milk to get rid of it. And then we finally started working on our little house here. I went for a sort of dark oak stripped design plus some never rack and I think it ended up looking quite cute. I think it fits in very nicely with the background there. You know me, I love my building and I kitted out the floor in this house. I then went on to kill this dude because I hate him, enchanted my sword and slept for the final time in the tent watching the sunset. I then got about interior decorating this place which took quite a while, sleeping in our house for the first time but the yellow bed had to go instead pink bed, double bed, love it. And by day 35, we had finished the interior, added in loads of cool stuff, some chests, which are labeled, we got our old armor there, and it's looking rather nice. And here is the finishing touch, a bamboo in a flower pot. And then the next day when we woke up, we decided to do some farming, making some carrots and some wheat in these fields here. And I decided to just start farming everything, including some melons and pumpkins as well. However, one thing I did want to farm was cows. So I went out and got some 
wood. Also, just in case you were wondering, as I haven't really seen it yet, this is what this place looks like at night. It looks quite pretty. But that wood I just got was for a barn for my cows, which I built very quickly, didn't take too long at all. And it's only a wee little barn, but I think it's rather cute and fits in very nicely with our house there. I then, of course, led a load of cows back to the barn and started breeding them up. Yeah, baby. At this point, I thought, you know what? I fancy some mining. So day 40, let's make some iron pickaxes. And I headed into the mines where we spent a while. We managed to get some diamonds, but also, more importantly, some gold for trading with those piglins, which is exactly what I did. And once again, our luck wasn't really superb, to be honest. We didn't get many at all. In fact, I only got three. So I ended up just killing Enderman the old-fashioned way, mixed in with some trading, of course. I then made a new diamond pickaxe as I just wanted to, and I started looking for the end portal, which I found quite quickly. It's really not that far away from my base. And oh boy, it was a messy fortress. But luckily, after a bit of searching, we managed to find the room with the portal. However, I did not have enough eyes of ender, so I had to go back to the nether to get some more. This time, just killing Enderman, and this is where things all went wrong. I kind of got cornered by these hoglins here, and yeah, I, I died. Look at that. And then I died again, coming back to get my stuff. Lucky just punched me into the lava. Not good. So I decided to armor up this time and head back with a shield and an axe. And this time I was determined. I was going to fight off these hoglins, collect all my stuff, and yeah, I died again. So that's awkward, but we slept, we went back again, and we actually managed to get everything this time. All the hoglins were dead. We did lose some stuff, but luckily not our ender pearls, so we could finish off the end portal. However, we're not going there just yet. I want to do some more mining to get some gold for some golden apples, as I feel like I'm going to need them. And with that, we have reached day 50, the halfway point. So I decided to do a little tour of our area so far. I think it's looking rather good for only 50 days of Minecraft, but... Let's continue. So I've made some golden apples as we are now halfway through. We probably should kill the ender dragon. And what you're about to watch is the worst ender dragon fight you'll ever see. As you can see, I'm just shooting the dragon, hitting him, and then this happens. And I land in possibly the worst place ever. I tried to MLG water. It didn't work. And now what you're going to see is me trying to get my stuff back. Starting out with this ender pearl, which missed, meaning I died. I then tried towering up and got knocked off by the ender dragon and died. This time I just walked in, got hit by the ender dragon and died instantly. But finally I managed to get my stuff and most importantly my bow and my sword which were both up there and I killed that stupid ender dragon. However my water disappeared so I had to do this to get down and I came back in, collected all the XP and all my stuff and then we headed home. Blech. But we slept straight away and then took out our anger on these cows here, as well as doing some enchanting with our new enchantment points. Now, after the stress of killing the ender dragon, I wanted to do something a bit more chill. So I decided to make my first automated farms and I'm making some automated sugarcane farms, mainly because they're really easy to do and I'll be needing paper if I ever get an elytra or I can trade the paper with villagers, etc. So you can see here, I eventually got it working and then I also wanted to make it look nice as well as make it bigger so I made a second one on the left which took a couple of days out of our daytime but once this is built we can just leave it let it be and it'll passively get a sugar cane and it's not the perfect design I know but it's as good as it's going to get for me for a while I could be bothered to make a perfect one I then had to decorate it of course to try and make it look nice I used some jungle plus a mix of spruce had to go get some shroom lights as well as I just think it looks so much better than glowstone and I didn't really know what to do so I kind of just left the building like this for now I think I might add a roof on later I'm not sure what I want to do with it but for some reason after I built this I was like I want some birds I don't know why this came over me but I just thought I want to get some parrots etc and I found this portal right next to my base with like golden apples gold it would have been pretty useful if I found it earlier but oh well we've got the spare gold now for the future and I managed to find a couple of birds this one here and a little blue one as well which I didn't actually capture me taming but you can see them both here look how cute they are so cute in fact that I decided they're gonna stay in my house so I used my new silk touch pickaxe to get some grass blocks and put them up on here and look at them dance baby but that's enough of that for now instead we're going to head out into the world and we're going to get some materials such as spruce and we're also going to start bringing back some villagers this village i found quite far away so what you're about to watch is about three or four days worth of time of me just boating them through tunnels i dug out etc it took 
way too long, all right? But eventually, we got them close enough where I was like, let's use some rails now, which was a lot quicker for getting them up and down the bumpy terrain. And the reason we brought back these two is because we're going to breed them. So I got them to roughly near my house where I wanted them to be, and I was thinking, right, where are we going to put them? So I started clearing out some space here, and I thought this will be where we actually trade with them, but we're going to breed them in this hidden cave underground. Yeah, they're going to be trapped in here. It's going to be hell for them. Every time I make a villager breeder, I always just hide it out of the way, and it's always just a cobblestone box but you know what it works and you can see some different rooms here that's because i'm planning on converting these guys so we get the better trade so i set out a load of beds so they can get breeding through them a load of bread as well and off they set making babies lovely however to convert these villagers i'm going to need a zombie and to make that zombie stay permanently we're going to need a name tag so we headed to the woodland mansion finally where we took on <laughs> all these vindicators and uh yeah this this kind of happened which is kind of a shame forgot how strong these guys were and yeah yeah but we managed to get our stuff back with relative ease it was a bit of a pain as these guys were chasing me down and they're slightly quicker than every other mob but we got it back and we managed to finish off those three there with relative ease and then we just gathered some materials had a quick sleep i actually set my bed outside so if i died again i'd spawn back in here we got a music disc plus our name tag beautiful However, I suddenly started dying to a random invisible vindicator. I have no idea where it was, but it was invisible. However, it was gone when we came back, so we were fine. We just managed to get our totem of undying, and look, our new disc. We love some dancing parrots around here, and you know what we love even more? Jeremy's, that's right. I made a name tag, planted some trees, and we lured Jeremy back. He's going to be the one who converts all our villagers. Got him in this boat here, gave him his name tag, and we were set and ready to go. So I brought our first victim into here and managed to get a mending trade on him after like five trades. It was pretty lucky, making up for our terrible ender pearl luck earlier in the video. However, we didn't have enough emeralds to lock in his trade, so I had to head back all the way to that flipping village that we got them from and trade with this farmer here for some emeralds. He just traded some wheat, you know. And then we got making our potions of weakness, which needed a spider's eye. And I remembered I left one over here when I was bringing back the villagers. So luckily it still hadn't despawned and I managed to make our fermented spider's eye and our first three potions of weakness. I then went back and locked in the trade with this dude. Jeremy is now trapped in here and we can convert our villagers with ease. Look at them go. There he is, a lovely zombie. This one has a lot of armor, but we added our golden apple and our potion and we headed off to gather some materials for where these new villagers are going to stay. And after he was converted, he traded the mending book for one emerald, which is a great deal. So we moved him up here to his new living. He escaped at first, but eventually we managed to get him in there. So now we have a way to get the most useful book in the game, but we don't have a way to get emeralds. So I went and bred up some villagers and then converted one into a farmer who gave me a decent trade, but obviously we need to convert this guy. So I went and got an apple, made it into a golden apple and went back and locked in his trades and then converted this guy also. So now we have a way of getting emeralds. However, we're probably going to need a bit more in the future. Now, while this guy was converting, I decided to work on actually enclosing the bit where they're going to be. I've left space for a basement as well, which we're probably going to use a bit later. Brought our farmer dude up into his new home where he will stay forever. It's quite daunting when you think of it, isn't it? Then we went and did some trading to get some emeralds. Thanks to his new rates, we managed to get a decent amount of emeralds, especially once we started trading pumpkins as well. But it's time we made this place look nice. So I converted it into our villager hall where we've got this lovely sort of weird barn shape, kind of similar to the other builds in the area. And we actually used some of our emeralds to decorate at top to show that it is a villager hall. Over all that time, that took about three days. I then got decorating the interior as well as it was looking quite ugly. Protected them with some gates and then did some more villager breeding as we got a load of beds in here now. Moved this cliff on the outside, which was quite ugly. And then we bought our first mending book, which we are going to add to our pickaxe here. As that's right, it's time to go mining once more. And the main thing I was looking for was gold and diamonds, particularly gold. And I managed to find quite a lot of gold on the first day. Not so much on the second day, but we did get a little bit. But more importantly, look at all these diamonds. Yes, around 20, which is lovely. Oh, and a little bit more gold as well. But we headed back, put all our goodies back into our chest here. And we went ahead and made some golden apples. Luckily, one of our villagers actually trades apples now, so we don't have to go knock down a load of trees, which is lovely. 
I then converted this paper trading villager and decided my nether portal needed an upgrade. However, I accidentally went AFK for three days. I'm not going to count these because it was a complete accident. I left my PC for seven hours and came back to find that this had happened. Luckily, I caught it with the replay mod. Yep, a zombie had killed me. So when I came back, literally seven hours later, as you can see here, I had to come and pick up all my stuff, which luckily hadn't despawned because this is a single player world. But there were a few benefits to this. Firstly, being my sugarcane farm was still working quite a lot of the time I was AFK and my villagers had multiplied quite a lot, but I still hate them. They're the worst things to happen to Minecraft. Look how annoying this guy is. It literally took me a day to get him back in the minecart and into his hole, but we got there eventually. And now our sugarcane has more of a use as we can trade paper with this dude to upgrade his trays. And we can also get lanterns now from emeralds, which I do love using. You probably noticed they're everywhere. My mending villager also got upgraded and now trades books and I had a lot and he actually trades efficiency five books as well as mending what a villager anyway time to do up this never portal i added the efficiency five buck to my pickaxe slept and then we got working on this kind of wacky design here i think it looks quite cool and i actually hated my last one so much that anything was an improvement anyway we traded a name tag which our villager now sells and added one to barry our first cat and at this point i decided to spruce my arrow a little bit and add in a few trees as it was looking quite bare we've got one right by our house here and we added another one just on the other side of the cow barn as well. But at this point, I decided let's do a little bit of maintenance and then let's go on an adventure. I actually made this automatic bone mill machine as well, which we're going to place all our useless seeds in. And then we set out on an adventure, killed some chickens there and just went around finding some random stuff. Didn't actually find that much interesting stuff. Nearly died to this guy with a trident at one point, but he didn't drop it for me. Saw a polar bear, got a gold block, found a treasure map, found the treasure, some cool stuff in the treasure and then we just sort of headed home as that adventure barred me. Instead we headed back to the end to find a couple of end cities. It took quite a while to find one. I actually ran out of blocks multiple times but we eventually found this massive one here which was actually next to another one as well so we got quite lucky although I do hate these places and it's just the worst but we got all the cool resources and some cool diamond gear and most importantly of all we managed to get ourselves an elytra. Look at this sick MLG water bucket trick here. Nice. But anyway, we found our Elytra and we managed to get a load of cool diamond stuff out of these chests as well, improving quite a lot of our gear, to be honest, as most of our stuff wasn't even enchanted. As you can see, it's almost broken. Now, I did forget rockets, but I did manage to fly over to this ship here, get another Elytra and some more cool stuff. Always good to have a backup Elytra. And after looting all the chests, we began the long journey home, which took quite a while. We were quite far out, but eventually we managed to find one of those little portal things and headed back to where we fought the Ender Dragon. And look at this cute little fly I do into the portal here. Oh, lovely. When I emerged, it was raining, which is the first time we've seen rain as we've been sleeping in our bed so much. So we soon got rid of that rain by sleeping in our bed. I then bought a load of mending books and added it to all of our new gear, naming some of them some weird names. And speaking of weird names, I decided to name my parrots Leonardo DiCaprio and Kate Winslet. Look at them dance. It's like the Titanic. Used some of my end stuff for some new decoration. Nice little lamp there. And had a go with my elytra. Look at me flying around having a grand old time. And after that last adventure, I was just feeding off it. I was like, you know what? Adventure number three or four, whatever this is. Yeah, never right time, baby. We went and got some ancient debris. We actually got really lucky with this one here. We managed to get a vein of three, which I'm pretty sure is quite rare. And after using all our beds, we ended up with six ancient debris, which is pretty good, but only enough for one tool. So I decided the tool should be a pickaxe, as that is the thing I use most. And our pickaxe has got some really good enchantments as well. Here I am admiring it. And as we are reaching the end, I decided, you know what? There's one build in my area that just looks terrible. And that was our sugarcane farm. So I decided to add a roof and an actual functioning roof as well. So we've got another floor on this thing with a staircase on the outside. I'm going to show you around the entire area in a second, but I decided to add this little trophy here showing off all our resources we had got so far that are just left over. And I added a potato farm as well as this is day 99. I can do what I want, but there we have it. We're about to reach the big 100 as we sleep and watch the sunset for a final time. And here we are, day 100. Wow, we have made a lot of progress over these days here. Starting out with this little tent here, moving on to these crazy buildings we've got going on. I'm very happy with this area. I think it's turned out quite lovely. Obviously, we didn't actually end up 
putting anything in here, but I was thinking of maybe continuing this if people enjoyed this video. So maybe next time, if there is a next time, you'll get to see everything. And also, right, when the observer goes, right, the redstone behind it sets off and it opens up these trap doors every time. So that's like a fault in the design there, but oh well. This is our house. I think this is a really cute house. It fits in really nice with this area. We've got all our enchanting stuff, our mine. We managed to get a decent amount of stuff in these chests here. Same within here, to be honest. We've got a decent amount of things just like lying in these chests. They're all quite well organized. I tried to keep it neat and tidy and I think I actually managed pretty well here. And our resources, I'm hoping we'll get bigger if we do continue in the future. But yeah, this is our area. This is day 100. I think we've made a solid amount of progress over these 100 days. And I was thinking of maybe starting to stream what happens after this. So if you are interested in that, let me know in the comments and I, I will consider it. But unfortunately, that is all we've got time for. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you did enjoy. Make sure to leave a like and comment and I shall see you another time. Goodbye. And for those wondering, here are my statistics after those 100 days, as you can see, a lot of things done.